letting go is really the, the, the main inspiration. And I keep saying that because for the longest time, um, when I was a little younger and all of us were a little younger, we would trap ourselves so hard into um, believing in this perfect finished product, which um, we kind of lost sight of what art really is and what it should be. Click in a big change in us about a year, a year and a couple of months ago. For some reason, it was right in the middle of the, of the little faster record cycle that uh, things began to take a change in, in the best way possible, which led us to making this record. The Verge. The Verge. Never really planned on making it the album title. Um, somebody just suggested it one day, and we're always like, wow, it's kind of makes sense for where we're at right now. Writing the new record was 100% different from the way we've ever wrote songs or made any of our past EPs or a little faster. Ow. I think we were trying too hard before. I think that's as simple as it comes to is I think we were really just, we were going for a sound, we were going for maybe a look or a, we were trying specifically for something. I don't think we've ever been able to show our true colors until now because we've, we've always been doing stuff that we thought we needed to do to you know be successful when the whole time all we needed to do was just be ourselves our listeners aren't stupid and uh, they never have been we don't need to write about um, the high school locker room and stuff if we've been out of it for like seven years <laughs> My name is Elvis Basquet, and I'm a producer. Uh, a lot of people, you know, go by the name Michael, but I, I prefer Elvis. What's with the deep voice? <laughs> What's that? What's with the deep voice? Oh, oh you don't want my real? I thought it was, I thought it was part of the deal. I no, you can do, do whatever you want, dude. I was you, gonna do a voice. You can oh, be. You can. Okay. You All right. Can. The first thing I noticed immediately was the fact that you guys could actually play really well together. And then we decided the way we we're gonna do the record was is that we're gonna have you guys play in a room, 
and actually play like a band. We were going to do it that way. And we actually did it. And people say that today. And they don't do it. And we really, really did that. I, I just tend to feel that you will play better if you're not focusing on a click, focusing yeah. on the part and the grooving. You know, the first one's going to be the, the craziest as far as getting used to our vibe and how we're going to do it. After that, it gets sexy and sweet. It's fun. You guys are badass. I'm not worried about you playing at all. We didn't use a click track a lot of the time. We just let the natural feel and rhythm of the song go because we can lock in with each other and have an inner, an inner metronome. I mean, we did this album how records are supposed to be done. We just kind of approached it in more of like a, we're not gonna spend too much time thinking about these songs. We're just gonna rock out. And there would be times where we'd be like, I don't know if we should do that for too long because you know we don't want to bore people and then Someone would be like, fuck it, dude. Like, let's just rock it out. Like, who cares? And at the same time, we didn't compromise our, our musical abilities. We just kind of took it in a different approach, I think. We uh, kind of made sure that there was never more than, at most, six instruments going on at the same time. We're not downplaying it with oversaturating it and, and doing too much stuff to it. It's it speaks for what it is and it speaks for what it was in that one week of what, how we created it so um, this is definitely one step of, of, of faith for us but it's got proving grounds that's what the verge is proving grounds never say you're good I really like the Joyride a lot. It's definitely one of the more lighter songs. It just it makes you feel good. It's that summer song. I feel like you know it's automatically it's really easy to lose yourself in nodding your head to that you know particular song. We came time to hit the studio and we had the initial kind of fear of not being able to carry through with making this album and that was totally de totally defeated by the first week we were in there because we wrote 13 songs in seven days. Um, had a really set way of how to go about production with the rest of that month. Um, went with the first songs we wrote and that's the album now. That's what The Verge has become is that one week we spent of pouring our all. We just kind of let things happen and uh, we just kind of let our feelings like take over and, and let the music take over in turn. Jay, Christian, Micah, and Elvis was in there, all had their headphones on and were playing along with me while I did all my drum takes and that really it meant something. It was like I was playing a live session right there, but that was the record. Those were my final drum takes.
do something kind of sick there with to go along with this fill. Little <laughs> My name's Dave Holdridge, also known as the Dove by you guys only. And uh, I am the engineer and mixer of there for tomorrow's The Verge. That's fucking badass. That's pretty badass. I do say so myself. Badass. You know, when you guys came in, you guys came in kind of like somewhat prepared. You guys had some unmusical ideas, and you came in to co write with Elvis, the producer. And that was kind of the vision from the beginning that, you know, he was going to be part of the creative process. You did it halfway on the yeah, second verse, yeah. but definitely crashed the one. Yeah. And, uh, I'm afraid of those crashes. Yeah, and, and uh, I liked it when the bridge, when you were on the crash versus on that. Yeah, this, this one doesn't, for the do bell. It. doesn't yeah. do it well. I think it flowed really well. I think you guys got along with Elvis Spring, and Elvis was the right guy for the job. Because, you know, Elvis knows what to touch and what to leave alone. I think we've been misunderstood for any other reason than we misunderstood ourselves in the past. But we're starting to understand more and that's obviously the journey of life, but um, I think uh, we'll be misunderstood less now. This is what we should have been all along. We've never actually been one genre. We've kind of been figuring ourselves out since we were 13 and this record is like stamping something. Before I met them, uh, basically, I didn't know what to expect because I was basing all, all of my decisions about what I was going to hear the first time on the EP and the album that I had heard previously. I absolutely believe that this album will say all the things that we've been wanting to say. I think the significance of the album titles is exactly what we're coming to as a band. It's um, we're coming to an, an edge of, of something where where it significantly changes. I truly think it will. A big joke, just kind of stupid. You should probably film that for the TV. Just I always try. I always like to see what guys try to figure out to do. All right, kick and both crashes. Because I'm gonna do the same thing and then I tell them to do it with a snare. <laughs> like wait, what? You'll see. All right, give me snare and left crash. Snare and right crash. Snare and both crashes. <laughs> is, that a, is that a trick question? Yeah. <laughs> I always like to see what people try to do. You know, like, <laughs> kind of like that. Part does. Yeah. <laughs> it 
it's a band playing in a room. It's a real band, it's real guys playing. And I think that's what's missing in a lot of today's albums is that everything is, you know, it's, it's so manufactured and so processed that, you know, we, we're missing the reality a little bit. And, um, and obviously, you know, we want things to sound the best they can, but I think an enhanced reality is a lot better than a manufactured fantasy. Hunt is one of those songs where it's immediately, when we started to write Hunt, Elvis was just like, this, this is one of those songs. <laughs> he was like, this is a single. Dude, I think that's the first single, man. Yeah. Dude, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, people are going to be like, <laughs> what, what, that, yeah, that's dancing. That, that's danceable, but it's like also yeah, for aggressive. Yeah. 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 Dude, leave it. Play that again. Play. Yeah, I, I dude, that song. Play, 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 play it. Play Are you ready? When? Yeah. When? This is what, take three? Yeah, take three. Hunt, hunt, hunt. Uh, that one's very bass driven. Um, I'm pretty proud of what I did on that. We haven't really ever expressed anger or too much of edge in our music before, so this was really such a good opportunity to do that with because of the, the, the energy in the studio and that room was creating such a vibe for us that just made us really speak loud. I mean, it, it wasn't, it, we weren't trying to whisper things anymore. faster to the verge, you can hear the obvious growth in our musicianship and our maturity, but it's the same band where we've actually turned into I, what I, you know, young men. We're not we're not high schoolers anymore. We're we're adults and this this is a very adult record. I think that was a huge step for us on this record was the ability to write a you know more pop friendly song like Hunt and it still have that grown up feeling to it. What to do? This is what it's like to get locked out of the studio that you're working on your album in. Well, the back door at least. Is that a camera? We don't take front doors. That's a nice camera you got. We got laptops, cameras, backpacks, ready to get shot and robbed. 
Dude, this is taking forever. I'm gonna call him now. Give him a double whammy. I'm gonna give Elvis the whammy right now. I don't care what the hell you're working on, you open up the door right now. <laughs> no. Right now. Christian came in and surprised me more than he ever has. I didn't think that he had the ideas on guitar that he did. I did a lot of stuff on this record that I didn't think I had in me. His talent shined through and his ear for what he wanted to have as an identity in the band shined through. And Christian's very talented and he's, you know, he's obviously the talent behind the photography that we've done ourselves and especially our videos. When we were write, writing songs, I would just start playing guitar and it was a really weird feeling how things would just come to me and we would just start playing them. Because I've never, I don't think I've ever really gotten that before. It's always been like, you know, I had to write a part and it was a process. Dub, you doing popcorn? Doing popcorn. You doing crack? We really like to keep the fridge stocked up, you know, with the appropriations. To really drive the energy of what you're doing all day. <laughs> That's all you need. Micah totally surprised me the day when he just stopped giving a fuck. What did he do? He hit his hand? And I'm not saying he ever was overly conscious before. Micah just really has so much going on in his mind and he's so smart. Alright, try it again. His writing process on this record was so fresh and so smart and so new for There For Tomorrow. It is the future of our sound. Lyrically, it's very confusing to me because I, I, I listen to things and the meaning changes all the time. Um, so that initially to me means it's timeless. These songs and the meaning and the content. I really can't tell you what they're about, man. They just kind of came up and um, I would maybe sing a melody or uh, a lyrical line would pop in my head and I would tie the words together real quick on the fly when we were writing the songs and stick with it and somehow just loop in all the words together. Um, they just all come back from a really fight back mentality because we felt so oppressed for a long time in ourselves. And um, that's why I keep talking about letting go because that was the main source of, of where all the, these lyrics came from. And, really letting loose and lashing out and not being afraid to crack in a vocal line or something and um, be a little bit more honest so people can really understand where we're coming from or at least the position we're coming from, not exactly what we're defining. You got it already? One more and I'll go into the verse. I don't think I don't think it'll be confusing to people because they're gonna put their own interpretation on it, and that's why I leave it open to not really define what each song is about. Maybe one day I'll come out and be like, you know what? That song Blue is about this. Because by then I would have figured it out, but I haven't figured it out yet. Where is it? My club tracker. There we go. There it is. <laughs> so, uh, this is the bass lesson number one YouTube series, uh, Al Pominski. So you're gonna want to start with your uh, with your root note, right? So that's that's your root note there. I, can't so. do this <laughs> I think Jay is probably like the best comedic relief of our band, and he really comes in and he he can lighten up the mood and really really brighten up the day. Christian, he was all the way opposite the room from me. So I was just constantly giving the finger, I was like, you man, don't like you. And his bass playing went to a whole new level on this record. I just kind of jammed something, and uh, it'd be kind of, you know, 
maybe more riffy than than I normally play, and the guys would be like, "Yeah, that sounds good," you know, and, and it kind of gave me confidence to just kind of write however I felt, you know, was fun and um, and also appropriate with the music, you know. Something embarrassing about the rest of my band. Okay, well, um, all in all, they all shit themselves on a nightly basis. Who doesn't? I do. I'm on a road, they color coded my badge of allegiance. Yeah, played out my song, give me the old ways to deal with my demons. I found a road where they color coded my badge of allegiance. Played up my soul Gave me the old ways to deal with my demons See past the smoke Think of her scars used to shadow the weakness I remember how, how um, almost abrasive the meaning of Nowhere Boulevard was I was chasing down the I like, I really like Noah Boulevard because of the imagery it has and the lyrics and from line to line it kind of takes on uh, some serious matters. Some people will think it's political, some people think it's religious. I um, just think it's more about day-to-day -day happenings with people and how they interact with each other and um, how gullible people have become basically. That's what that sounds about. There we go, we got one meaning. has attitude and it's it's just musical. Those are the two I think main vibes. I'm I'm addicted to, to Nowhere Boulevard and that song in my eyes represents the entire record. There's a certain vibe that's in all of our blood and in, in our minds and that song is it. So Nowhere Boulevard. Elvis has like a very special way of getting the five of us to kind of just go like this, you know, and it's, um, I think a lot of it had to do with Elvis and him pushing us to just keep going and keep going and because he knows that it's there and he has a really good way of pulling it out of us and, you know, when it goes too far, he also knows when it's gone too far and to kind of take a break.
Yo, Micah, what what are we doing right now? We is uh. <laughs> hey, going hey, to uh, going to James and Gage, our good friends. They have a little design team. I think some of you might be aware. It's called the Undesigned. And uh, they're doing our album artwork. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, The Verge is just like a good the overall, verge. yeah. I like it. Just a simple, you can't really take it wrong. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like the V. Straightforward. The, the V is, is a good symbol. Exactly, that's what Perfect. I Perfect. That's hard cut. Like, and like, if you think about it, yeah. like fast forward is two Vs kind of yeah. this way, and then the verge is flip it, it like is, 45 yeah. degrees, and then you can even like keep going with that with more records, like keep turning it. What are you thinking? I'm just thinking story. Letters. If it was all black and white and then just the word verge was red and like yeah. I wanna find this thing. I like the V and it, it definitely fits with the red. <laughs> yeah, that is so sick if it was just the verge, the verge in the middle yeah. and it was yeah, red. Yeah. yeah. Cause underneath is a black and white with red overlay. Yeah. It'd be nuts. I love that would that. be nuts. Cause then that really sets it off on the shelf too. Exactly. And then you're just like, holy shit, what is that? Now what are we what are we thinking about uh photos though? Um, Would you guys like scout and like try yeah. to? Uh, it all depends on what the concept is. I mean, if it's yeah. something we just have to find, then yeah. that could be easy. Sure. But we'd have to find it. We'd have to spend days finding. It. Yeah. I'm gonna shoot it probably film too, like 35 okay. millimeter or medium format, so it's like real gritty and grungy and just detailed. Yeah, and film is gonna be so special. That's the special. Yeah. Excited. I'm excited to shoot the film for it. It's all gonna be like in focus and It'd be dope real legit and video symmetrical. On film. Yeah, I love the artwork kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 You streaming at the studio. Maybe maybe this will go in the DVD or something. Sweden, Sweden, Sweden. <laughs> Sweden, Sweden, Sweden. It's been Sweden. guitar part you want a louder and the ride starting with the yeah car. I did notice that for sure the ride in the in my lead a little soft. Out more. yeah definitely I agree and um, it seems like vocals overall could come down like half a DB they're pretty damn loud guess who's out here it's not Jiminy Cricket and it's not Bella from Twilight Hold up. What? I did. <laughs> no, it's not even twisting. Maybe that's it. It doesn't like, I don't hear a lock. Yeah. This one's not even. Go away. Go away. That doesn't do anything. Oh my gosh. It's just like 30 minutes. Can we just fuck the door? There we go. Yeah, what was it, bro? It's the this thing. Yeah. Mm, look at that. They're still saying where they're from. The best candy comes from Sweden. <laughs> we make ways to uh, Georgia, to Stone Mountain, adventure. There's so much stuff in there. Dude, we're being followed by Tron. Cops! What do I do? We got cops, cops! What do I do? <laughs> both Standing forward, I can see both ends of one mall at the same exact moment in time. This is happening right outside of our hotel this right is now. so crazy. I can get a little rough frosties for my a wine. Everybody's personality changes a little bit you know I think every year or even with seasons people change and that, that's been the biggest thing that's changed with me is the way I look at why you're in this like what are you doing this for what's the meaning behind your life and why you're making music I can't really talk about 
what integrity is because my favorite part of of, of music and uh, art in general is for the listener to determine what is happening in the music. The biggest life lesson thus far, because I still have a lot of mind to live, is um, maybe not to think so hard on uh, on everything and just kind of go with your feelings. I think that's the best way to go about music is, is all with feeling. I don't know, it remains to be seen where we're heading. Uh, I mean, we're, we're going somewhere. We're, he we're heading in a, definitely a different direction. Um, but I think it remains to be seen, you know, where that is exactly. I'm probably doing the most terrible job right now. No mirror. No hands. No hands. It's really yummy. It's like Hold on. Hold on. We truly will always face each other, and and we're not. None of us are bad people. It's just that, you know. You get lost sometimes, and we truly found each other making this record. I just don't think this is ever gonna stop. Like, just this feeling, this record, it's like, I've definitely been excited about stuff that we've done before, like, very excited, but I never had the feeling that I had the first time I listened to this record from front to back. It's an awesome feeling, and I definitely hope it happens again. <laughs> It was all just like organized so well and it, and it made all of us kind of in a really good mood, I think, and you know, that includes being in the studios, good vibes the whole time. We were all just having a great time. Mountain! Oh, damn! Snow! On the mountain! We wanted some photos for the album of us and of an experience, so we chose to hike a mountain. I like drawings. If the world was coming to an end, this is where I'd come for a die. Uh, if you're staring at a portrait, there's got to be some sort of imbalance to really understand what beauty is because beauty is imperfect. So um, that's kind of what we've really learned to come to terms with is the, the how when things don't go right, this is great. they really matter a lot of times more than when they do go right. He's likely to sleep with my sister or something. Yeah. One day, son, all of this could be yours. You could have a whole kingdom in the palm of your stick. <laughs> I want our music to, to be timeless and influence all of our peers, so. The Verge is an important record. Some of the most talented young guys I have ever worked with in my entire career. And that's, that's the truth. And uh, blew me away. And, and I think that we captured magic, we captured it in the moment. We didn't waste time. We went through it and every day it was like a new song and a new thing. We captured it right there. And I think it shows me how. I think that it, you feel it when you listen to it. And you wouldn't feel it if it wasn't really good. And it's actually, it's unbelievable. So I'm very proud of this record. Finding ourselves has obviously been a huge journey for us over the past couple of years, and uh, now it's coming close to an end. No, it's not, because that means we're dead. We're not dead. We're not dead. Camera speeds, take whatever. Action.